Okay, we've already talked about two source patterns. That's if you're sitting on the edge of a pool and you put your feet in the, the pool and you move your feet up and down at the same time, that's in phase, you create these ripples in the pool. Those ripples create a pattern. And in the last video, I showed you how that pattern can be simplified into this sort of fan shape. And all we're looking at is these lines, the nodal lines, the places where in that pattern the water is very calm. Now we're only looking at minimums. There are formulas for maximums, but we're just doing the ones for minimums for 2D interference. So in this problem, uh, I've got that same sort of pattern. I've got uh, the two nodal lines marked and my central maximum, the part where the water is turbulent, and it's at right angles between this line between the two sources. So I've got this pattern and we came up with a formula PS2 minus PS1 equals N minus a half lambda. But there are other formulas that can be derived from this pattern. And I'm not going to derive them, we're just going to talk about them. If you look at this pattern, I could pick a point on the pattern, say on the second nodal line, and I could measure PS2 and PS1 and maybe come up with the wavelength that created this pattern. But I'm going to use another formula. In this formula, I create a triangle to that point and down to the middle of this line. This triangle can be used to derive another formula. And as I said, I'm not going to derive the formula, but we're just going to use it. We call this distance x, and we call the distance from here to here l. So I've created a triangle. And if you look in online or in a textbook, you'll find out why this turns into this formula. But basically, I've got a variable, a new variable, the distance between the two sources. I've got another new variable, the distance from the central maximum or the right bisector to the point on the second nodal line or the third nodal line or whatever, and this length L. Here's the formula that relates those together. The wavelength that created this pattern has these variables in it. And if I put all the numbers in there, I'll be able to figure out what the wavelength is. So I've got a simple problem here. Uh, a wave it has, is 32 hertz. Uh, the distance I measure x um, in, let's say, in this experiment was 5 centimeters. I had the point on the second nodal line. I measured this length here, 20 centimeters, and the two sources were 3 centimeters apart. So here's my formula. I'm interested in what is the wavelength that created this pattern and how fast, was the, how fast were those waves moving. So lambda is x over l, 5 over 20. And it doesn't matter if I leave these as centimeters because the units cancel out. Uh, then I put d. Uh, the distance d is 3. Since that's centimeters, then lambda is going to end up being centimeters because the units here cancel out. The units of d will end up being the units of um, lambda. So it's 3 over the nodal line was 2 minus 1 half. I plug that into the formula and I get that lambda is 0 0.5 centimeters. Now, that's part A. For part B, I want to know how fast the wave is traveling. Well, we have our universal wave equation, V equals F lambda. V is equal to the frequency, 32, times the wavelength, 0 0.5. The speed of the waves is 16 centimeters per second. Double check the units because we frequently use meters per second, but um, this was in centimeters, so it ends up being centimeters per second. 